to talk about 12, 12, 12, the, the date. Some people say it's not special at all. I mean, just the, its unusual numbers uh, makes you think it's quite special. But um, I've always been told that uh, December is quite an important month, as everyone knows, and it's important to sort of hold the light in uh, December. And I'm also told a lot of this uh, alignment and a lot of things we're doing, um, it's uh, starting on important days of the 12th to bring in divine feminine energies. And uh, then I was told it's a connection of Nuit and uh, uh, Geb. Everyone's done Isis. If you, you've done Isis one, haven't you? Everyone's done Isis one, so you, you know about that. The, uh, and if you look at the map up there, you see the goddess Isis, and then you see Geb, her husband, underneath, and uh, holding hands. This little book here, which has got the best, easiest illustration and description of um, uh, what it is. Uh, uh, Shu separates uh, Nuit, the sky, and Geb, the earth. After travelling along the underside of Nuit's body by day, the sun is swallowed by the goddess each evening and passes through her body with the stars during the night to be reborn at sunrise. The red dawn sky represents Nuit's blood as she gives birth to the sun. And uh, that's uh, just from this book here. And you see them uh, together. Uh, the story goes that they had to be separated, of course, so that people could move <coughs> on the earth. Uh, that you would like to try and connect. Uh, so I was told it's the uh, return of the divine feminine energy to earth and also the uh, reconnection of heaven and earth, uh, which in ancient Egyptian terms means that Nuit and Geb can finally be connected. And really there's no reason why you can't have uh, Geb clo and Nuit closer together, you know, because they're, they're spiritual beings, so there's no reason why they can't merge together. That's what I was told. Uh, I was also told, as I said, it's important to hold the energy uh, for December because a lot of people are in fear. And I think the, the most will experience are some computer things. But you never know. It could be unfortunate. But uh, And again, uh, I do believe most of the calendars have changed, you know, because of the Gregorian calendars, so I don't think they've got the, the date correct anyway, the 21st of December. But I have felt a lot of uh, new energy uh, coming in, uh, uh, positive energy coming in since 22nd of November. So that's very good. And uh, and today I'm uh, sitting there, I can feel all stars coming down around me. Uh, that's I was having trouble focusing when we're going uh, through the teachers forum tonight. I feel all these stars coming down. You know, that sounds quite strange when I feel all the stars coming down. So that's nice. That's the way it's getting in early. So... Uh, we'll ask for Isis to come in. And, uh, so we'll move on Isis and we thank her for her presence. And we call upon all the mother goddesses. So I did bring Kuan Yin back in as well. We call on Lakshmi. Devi, Sarasvati, and many beings of light. We call on Mary, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, all the goddesses. I feel them coming swirling into the room. And know that when the feminine energy comes uh, in, it brings a softer, gentler, more beautiful energy uh, for us and for the world. Okay. That's all I'm doing. I'm not doing a, a full meditation now. I just want to explain that uh, I'm sure I've said it in classes, but uh, uh, I always find whenever there's a lot of feminine energy, uh, coming into the earth or in a, a location, there's always a uh, much lower crime rate. It's usually a much happier uh, place and location. And I guess I always think of like Singapore with the big Kuan Yin temple in the centre of the city and various little Kuan Yin temples uh, around the place. And I do find that uh, the feminine energy brings in that gentler, kinder, loving uh, energy. And where places are very, 
very strong male energy. It's always a higher crime rate and uh, uh, more discord and more arguments. Mm. So um, it's really uh, been since 1999 that we've had all the different astrological things happening to bring in the uh, feminine energy. There was an important transit also in June 2004, uh, the Venus transit. 2004, and I was over in the United States in Laguna Beach uh, during, uh, what was it, I think it was the uh, uh, Advanced Angel Therapy. I did a five-day Advanced Angel Therapy course with Doreen Virtue there. And, uh, yeah. Um, before that, I was sort of involved in the Mercurizidic Method, and uh, we were working with the feminine energies. And some of the books uh, that I've been reading, you know, I say that uh, really 2112 is about the return of the feminine energy and bringing that feminine uh, energy back into the earth. And I do think that is uh, quite correct, actually. I can ask Isis what she thinks. Dear one. Yes, this is Isis. This is Isis. This is Isis. And we greet you. Uh, you are all welcome here today. And we are laughing at you all, trying to decide what is the purpose of being here today. Well, we just thought it would be good to gather you all here. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, it is a lighter energy coming to the earth. It is a lighter energy coming to the earth. It is a more joyful, it is a feminine energy. But most people would not feel that necessarily as a positive energy. And we would simply say... Um, uh, a number of people, uh, animals, have passed in the last few weeks. Uh, and there are a number uh, close to us. And it is as if uh, some people just uh, can't cope with this newer vibration. Those who are weary and tired already will not find this extra energy so easy to deal with. And, again, as we often say, all this energy coming to the earth is rather like the time of the full moon. When you are meditating, you are doing your psychic and spiritual work, it feels joyful. If you are very stressed, you will be extra stressed. And Elizabeth was saying she felt anxious this morning when she first awoke, and she could not think why she felt anxious. And indeed, it was the anxiety of the world, it was the anxiety of the world that she was feeling. You see, when you sleep, and often she wakes up and feels anxious for a few minutes, uh, and then feels calmer. And uh, when you are asleep and uh, in that deep state, then you wake up, you feel things more strongly, and so you are picking up the anxiety. And do know that there are many still uh, believing that just possibly something difficult will definitely happen on the 20th and the 21st. So there are many uh, that you are not aware of who are fully uh, prepared for disasters on that day or for darkness, and for things like that. And many are not coping with the shifts and the changes that are coming to the earth plane. And uh, uh, we would say uh, that Elizabeth has predicted that this month would be a difficult month for computers, and would be worse around the 20th, uh, 21, 22, 23. And that is why her computer, uh, the computer today for the radio program, was uh, having difficulty. Uh, indeed, it was beset by uh, viruses, but uh, that is the way of the world, you see. That is the way of the world at the moment. Uh, so most of the world uh, is living in uh, that continuous virus of fear, and so it makes anything uh, like this uh, a difficult time uh, for people. It does not make them joyous. It makes them more difficult. And again, it was like the uh, alignments that occurred in 1987, which is really the beginning uh, of this time, this new age, 1987. And for Elizabeth, uh, that was when uh, she really uh, found life very difficult until early 1992, when there was another great awakening, another alignment on 11 uh, 1, uh, 92, And then she awoke. But she had been in darkness for five years. So you see, the Mayan calendar, in reality, 
it is all about the darkness, the ending of humanity, and the ending of uh, people who live in darkness being able to live on this earth, and that is how it is. And it is get, getting harder and harder for the people who live in darkness to survive upon the earth. And you look at this past year, you look at this past year, the death, the suicides. There have been many, many, many. There have been so many. And the darker forces are having their last hurrah as such uh, with all these people. So those who already are challenged are becoming far more challenged. And... Uh, so, we will not discuss the 21st further, for we say in reality it is not worth discussing it further. We will meditate upon that night, we will uh, go further uh, on our spiritual path that night, and then we will continue on, and then the world will continue on, and that is it. Now, we wish to go further and to bring Nurit with her stars in. Nurit with her stars. And you see, Nurit is my mother. She is my spiritual mother. The mother goddess. The goddess of protection. So you see, if you uh, bring Nurit down to earth, you bring her really close to all of you, then you are ultimately prepared for all challenges. Then, if you were to bring a Geb up to meet Nuit, and you were continuously in the body of Nuit and Geb, it is the ultimate spiritual protection, dear ones. It is the ultimate spiritual protection. All this year, we have been working on spiritual protection. And we have given you this method and that method. And all have worked to some degree. And we understand that not all methods uh, work continuously well for every person. But this, we do tell you, is a powerful one. It is a powerful one, and it is very gentle. There is nothing that can uh, protect you 100% from the difficult energies, the difficult people of this earth. It could not be so, you see. It could not be so. If it were like that, then you would decide there was no more challenges upon the earth, and then you would probably leave this earth plane. And none of you are ready for that yet. You must stay here to bring in more light and reconnect heaven and earth. And it is part of the ascension of the earth that we are working on today. The ascension of the earth to bring light to the earth, to bring the stars into the earth, to bring the light into the earth, and to bring the earth energy up to the stars, and so that is what we are doing. And as that happens, it is preparing the earth to go into light, to be reborn into light. And remember, when you go with that earth that is just simply full of stars and full of light, it will be so beautiful, that new earth. It will be so beautiful. So this is the purpose of today to bring heaven and earth together further. And it is for you, and it is for others. And, once more, it is service work that you are doing. It is service work you are doing on behalf of many people. Now, we are going to call upon the Archangels to do some clearing first, upon this room, upon this space. And we're going to call in Archangel Michael to come with his beams of light and put bright beams of light through you all. And we are bringing in also Azrael. And Azrael and Michael and now Anubis are coming and they are clearing uh, you all of energy cords, checking for lost souls and spirits with you that need to be taken to the light. Anyone that is tagged along as such um, as you come to this meditation tonight. 
And we're also working with the, our galactic brothers and sisters from Arcturus and from Sirius and the Pleiades. So you see, dear ones, part of this journey today is also uh, to help you to become more aligned with our galactic brothers and sisters of light, the Arcturians, the uh, Pleiadians, the Syrian beings. Would you like to be with like them? It would be beautiful, dear one. You would have a body of light and uh, you would be living in joy much of your life. So we are preparing you. And this is part of the process we will complete on the 21st of December, remember? Uh, activating your uh, Arcturian and Syrian light bodies and to bring those energies to the earth. Yes, indeed, all the work you are doing is unique to me and Elizabeth for uh, many are receiving different messages and for them it is important they receive the messages they receive. But for those initiates who really understand uh, about Isis and the feminine, this is the work that needs to be done now. To turn Earth into a planet of light that can take its place in the higher realms easily. To let go of the uh, Earth as it has been, you see, full of the virus of fears, the karma, and all the pain and suffering uh, that you experience on earth. And just to allow the beautiful parts of earth to exist. Now understand, there can be no existence without some lessons, but it need not be the many painful lessons that people continuously experience here on earth. It need not be like that. So this is what we are preparing you for and the earth for. To be birthed into light. And it is happening and you are almost there. Not yet, not this year, but you are almost there. And January the 5th, we have told you, is another special date. And a five should give away part of the secret. It is my number, my birth number, and my uh, special number. So, we must meditate on that day and to bring more energies from the stars, and especially Sirius, to bring more energies from Sirius in on that day. So all these things must be done continuously. And the work will continue in Egypt as well. The work will continue in Egypt. And finally, finally, uh, sometime next year there will be a great shift, a great shift. Now Elizabeth is saying, what about those who are saying uh, there is coming a great disaster in the form of a great solar flare? from the sun that will destroy many things on this earth that will destroy many things on this earth and we say mm, that may happen uh, but it will not be as destructive as many have seen but this event will occur and it will occur in uh, 2013 so we do wish you to consider this and to be prepared for this and to know it will be happening uh, in 2013, but it will not be the total disaster that many have seen, that life on Earth, as they have seen it, will be wiped out for many years, it will not exist in uh, uh, any degree of comfort upon this Earth. But events are happening that do uh, cause uh, concern and worries. But at the same time, the solar flares will also bring people to a greater uh, awareness, to a much greater uh, awareness level. So, uh, this is the path that has been chosen. 
There are many beings in the higher realms who overlook Earth. And they do have plans for Earth. They do have plans for Earth. Now we will go back to those busy angels gathering up the spirits uh, of some deceased ones who are with you. Now look around you all, dear ones. Look around you all. You may keep your eyes closed. You may keep your eyes closed. But uh, look around with your clairvoyant eyes, with your pineal gland. Look around. What can you see? Are there any spirits with you who need to go to the light? Are there any dark beings? We call upon the Arcturian beings of light. To put bright white light, we ask for their download upon and through us now. We ask them to remove any dark beings, any reptilian beings or energies around or within us, any lost soul, any dark demonic beings. We ask they be taken uh, down into the halls of Amenti or released to the light, as is needed and appropriate for them. And this is happening now, and there will be a silence for several minutes while this continues. Now, see a great portal of light in the centre of this group. And release into that portal of light any beings you wish to release that have not already uh, been taken away. Ask them to stand in that center of that portal of light. Archangel Michael will beam bright light upon them, Azrael, the Arcturian beings, and then the Syrian beings. I know there are many more Syrian beings coming now. And the beam becomes so bright. It's like a laser beam. Suddenly they give one great pulse. Aren't you aware of some spirits being taken to the light for healing? And a few spirits go down, down, down to Amenti for healing, judgment upon their soul and transformation. And this is as it should be. And today is very much a return of the Syrian energy to the earth. So it is very much the star blessings energy that Elizabeth received on 11-11-11-2009, uh, the star blessings energy in the Queen's Chamber of the Great Pyramid. And feel that starry energy now. And it's more of a blue uh, light from Sirius coming down. The Serene Council are here. And I have words of wisdom for you. Now, who are the Syrian Council? There are those who have been working with the Syrian Council for some period of time now. And um, now they wish to come and say some words. It is our time to return to the earth. And know that we are one voice. But 
There are 15 of us, the Syrian Council. But we speak with one voice through Elizabeth. And it seems to be a male voice, for mainly we are male. And this is the way it is. Um, we are mainly male. But there are five females. Hmm. An imbalance, you would say. And the Syrian Council are here to oversee uh, the transition into the new age, into the light of the world. They are the main council assisting. And knowing that uh, their uh, journey has not been easy, for well, there are many dark forces at work opposing their work. And there are some that are there but do not really greatly assist. The Orion energy is a positive energy, but the beings from Orion are not able to greatly assist Earth at this time. And then there are beings from the other planets who are not positive, who greatly uh, try and stop our work. But as the Syrian Council uh, come, we have been appointed uh, to talk through Elizabeth in the future about things happening to the world. And so Isis is still the Divine Mother, but the Syrian Council are the beings uh, behind many decisions that have been taken in recent years. And the Syrian Council uh, are deciding that this earth um, mm, must be changed. And the Syrian Council are the ones who have decided uh, that the earth needs to be born into light, rather than destroyed with a great solar uh, flare or a nuclear explosion. For a solar flare would set off a great nuclear explosion, you see. And so that is why we cannot allow that energy uh, to be so destructive. And we'll go back to the story of Ra the Sun God being so angry with people on Earth for not looking after the Earth and each other. And uh, he was starting to be angry and destroy the Earth. You remember that story? Well, Ra the Sun God is rather angry again at present, and that is why the number of solar flares have been happening and could happen. But remember, Always, always, uh, decisions were made that uh, uh, were tempered by uh, consultation with Tehuti. And Tehuti is part of the Syrian Council. Tehuti is part of the Syrian Council, you see. And uh, so a decision was made that the world would not end in a great solar flare and nuclear explosion. explosion. So, remember, Nuit was pregnant, she could not give birth to her children. But, uh, uh, the story goes that Tehuti gambled with Konsu, the moon god, and so Nuit could give birth to her children who lived upon the earth. And, even though Nuit and Geva separated, they're reuniting. So, in a way, you see, you're recreating the story. The story that you hear, that you see is mythological, is happening once more. And is Sekhmet running wild over the world? Well, in a way, other people are running wild over the earth. You did not need Sekhmet to be destructive. But no, ah, uh, we are bringing a gentler, softer, feminine energy to the earth, rather like the Greek bath of Sekhmet uh, to become a healing goddess. And so this is the plan once more for the earth to be saved, but not to continue as it is, for it cannot in physical form uh, continue. And so, as we have said, the work today is bringing heaven and earth together, and as they merge, and merge into light, it will be very simple to simply slide into and up to a higher uh, dimension 
for the earth. And you will all be living in bliss. It is possible to live on bliss, in bliss on this earth. And we greet you and we farewell you. We are the Syrian Council. Thank you. I'll go back to Tahiti. Do you want, the Syrian Council is not limited to 12 members. It is not limited to, to 12 members. Uh, other people might work with the Syrian Council of 12 members, but it is not limited to 12 members. If you were to look and you were to see the Syrian Council, uh, there is about 33 of them. There's about 33 of them. And you can see them uh, in the distance. 33 beings of light. Some people may work with a council of 12, but we say at this time there are 33 light beings from Sirius here. And they're all members of the council. But there are other members of the council who are not here today. It is not like your local council, you see. <laughs> they are not limited. They do not have elections. Uh, in fact, the council, uh, there are uh, thousands of members of the council uh, Syrian beings. Mm. For there are millions and millions of Syrian beings. And the members of the council, yes, there are thousands. And they come with different roles and different purposes. But the council that has been uh, asked to come here today to dealing with these immediate things here on earth is numbered uh, uh, 33. Okay? And we're still going back to this purpose. The purpose of being here as what you have been told. It is part of your soul contract. And there are many things that you cannot fully understand of why you study, why you do these things. And uh, we say, uh, we ask you to trust that being here today is of purpose to hear these things. And we will do a meditation. There will be a meditation to connect heaven and earth. And then we would ask you to continue that meditation each day for a week. Each day for a week. And then each month for 12 months. And this will help all on earth. So, as you have agreed, uh, your soul has agreed, all those who have had lives in Sirius uh, uh, are being reunited at this time to do their work. But not everyone is chosen to do this particular work. And those who have uh, decided before they incarnate to do this work are now starting to receive uh, their plans as such. And so some responded, some did not respond to this call. We did put out the call to many more, but most people mm, chose not to respond. Uh, as uh, their souls are covered in darkness, uh, and you would say um, they are not dark, but they uh, are covered in a grayness. So that uh, when they hear this call, they say, mm, this would be nice, I would love to be there, but I have many other pressing things I must do. So that must uh, take precedence. And that is like most of the world. Most of the world is just starting to wake up, the spirit world. And uh, they are still at a level of just beginning awareness, where they look at the psychic mediums and they say, wow, they are so good, they are so exciting, look at those people, they are psychic mediums, they can speak to the dead. But uh, in reality, there are realms and realms of enlightened beings all around you, willing to help you, and who wish to connect with you at this time, and wish you, uh, as you receive their light, you will walk down a road, and you'll emit this light. And as you emit this light, it is sending light to others. But you will not always see that. You will not always see that. And so, this is our answer. As to the purpose of why you are here, and the purpose of these meditations. Blessed be. And so we will do a meditation. So today, being the 12th of December, 2012, 12, 12, 12, we're doing a meditation to return heaven to earth in the form of Nuit coming down to earth to connect with Geb, the earth god. And as you continuously bring the stars 
down on the body of Nuit Nam to this earth and you merge the earth energy up and they meet together. And Isis will infuse more energy to this earth. You'll find it is easier to walk upon this earth lightly. It is easier uh, to feel joy in your heart. It is easier to flow with light. And this, which you promise, is starting to happen. You cannot believe that finally all the pain and suffering you have been through will be a continuous thing. But it is coming, it is coming. It will not always be totally continuous, but it is coming. And so you experience moments of great joy, of great pleasure, and then a lot of pain and sadness. But we say it is happening that the divine feminine energies are coming fully to the soul. So we would like you to consider our dear Mother Nuit and to think of her above you with her starry sky. Think of get below us and feel that energy. Now remember there were those that say the earth is feminine, it is Gaia. But we say it is mainly male. It is mainly a male energy. Hmm. But it is uh, those who abuse the most are always female. So that is why uh, the earth is called a female. Now, feel the earth beneath your feet. And as you feel the earth, you feel some pain in your feet. You feel some anxiety and fear, for that is the way of the earth. For that is the way of the earth. And now you feel a beautiful green energy beneath your feet. You feel a beautiful gold energy. And you feel Geb spreading his energy throughout the earth. For he had withdrawn his energy from the earth. And all you can feel is pain. All you can feel is pain. If Geb were to spread his energy throughout the earth, you would feel joy, you would feel peace. So we ask Geb to return his energy to the earth. We ask Gaia to return her energy to the earth. We call upon the white light beings uh, to return uh, their energy to the earth. The white light beings, the ley lines, are really white light dragons. I feel a surge of white light underneath your feet, a swirling all around you. This is the ley lines being returned to balance. Just before we begin, we will ask the Aboriginal guardians of this land for permission to do our work here. We ask them to join in and work with us if they wish. And they agree to work with us. We would like to say that we would really like the ancient Aboriginal our guardians and spirits to join in today. We would like our planet Earth to be like it was 500 years ago. And it was a peaceful and joyful place here. And we tell them we are doing our best to return the land to that state. And they agree to work with us here. And we thank them.
this music, returning, was recorded in a beautiful goddess temple underneath the ground. So that energy is still there. And now you're well of Nuit with all her stars arched above us. And she's starting to flow starry light down upon you all. And it's the energy of all the stars. And every star in the universe is sending pulses of light down to you. Every star that uh, sparkles brightly is a positive energy star and is radiating light towards us now. And as those pulses of light come and touch us, they touch little points in your body, what you might call the acupuncture points, the meridians, and little lines of light start to shoot out from you and within you. So you start to be reconnected back to the stars. And feel Nuit now just above us. And it's like she is just there above the ceiling. And she puts out her hands on the side. And feel give beneath us. And are trying to hold hands to join hands. And the fingertips meet. But we are still here. We are still here. And we're stopping them merging together. And I'll ask and wait. Put some advice on this. So, so I may be joined with Geb. You must bring more light from Sirius in. And you must let go of your logical minds, dear one. You have all chosen to be here to reunite heaven and earth. So let go of your logical minds on how this is going to occur. Now, look beyond this room and imagine you're above the earth looking down like on a Google map and you see Australia. And see the stars above. See the sun and the moon and the stars. And realize and the wheat is larger than just the one in this room. And Geb is also below our feet. And there is also the, the sea. So we call upon happy, the, uh, the god, the water god. He's not just water god of the Nile, he's water god of all the sea. So we call upon happy in the water elements. And we thank them. And then look out further and see a whole globe, a whole globe of the earth. And imagine the wheat is above the earth and the globe. And the gap is below. And once more they are reaching their hands to reunite. And then look out further. And you see, in reality, it is not just at our earth, out further and further and further. You see the sun and the moon and the stars. And the angry sun, and the angry sun, and the angry sun. I will ask Ra why he is cross. Dear ones, why would I not be cross? I have given you light, I have given you warmth, and I have done so for thousands, indeed millions of years. And we have provided you with light, with joy, with warmth, with all you need. 
and you have not been content with this. You have created sources of energy that destroy your earth. So once more, as in ancient of days, we are cross with you. So we go, zoom, and we send some energy that uh, does not uh, make you feel good. So, we say, what can you do to appease me? Hmm. We say there was nothing you can do to appease me. But no, uh, once more, uh, solutions may appear that you are unaware of. And we're aware of Tehuti now. Coming smiling into the room. And then you're aware way, way above us, way further away. This is incredible white matrix of energy. Incredible white matrix of energy. And as you sense this white matrix of energy, we're told this is the universal mind. The universal mind. And we'll ask the universal mind what we should do with the sun. We are the universal mind. We do not give advice. We tell you as things are, but we do not give advice. We say, yes, the sun is hot. It is crazy hot. And yes, a solar flare that could destroy you all is possible. The solutions are not coming from me. Solutions are not coming from me. I am like a recorder. I'm like a recorder. And a cashier records. You could see me like that. But I do not have the power to change the sun. And those who talk to me, who talk to the universal mind and seek information, are receiving that information. Now, you must ask to speak to the highest part of your soul, the Ark. The Ark, the very highest part of your soul. Imagine in the distance the brightest, brightest ball of light you could imagine, the Ark. That part of you that is wise, is beautiful, knows everything. And as you see that beautiful ball of light way, way above you, you're aware that everyone in the room has the same incredible ball of light. And it is a ball of light. But there is an invisible light that connects you all of your souls, all that all heard the call to be here today. And as you connect all your souls, you have all knowledge, all wisdom available to you. So, you do have a great deal of wisdom that is available to you. And so we'll ask each person's soul to now shine into their head and into their heart. Words of wisdom, words of light. And you may not ask your own soul what is my purpose for being here. What can I do about the current situation on earth? Messages of light will come into your mind and your heart.
Anas message is coming. You're aware of a great shift of energy coming into this earth, into your mind and your heart. And if you could look out the top of your head like a lotus or such, and shine your light outwards and look upwards, you'd see every star in the sky twinkling so bright. To get a sense of the moon and the sun and the stars being in harmony. You would get out a sense of Tahuti laughing in the background, saying, see, we are finding solutions for you, but always the solutions must come from you too. And you're aware now that there was a greater, greater goddess than Isis, a greater goddess than Nuit, a great feminine and male energy that is just the most powerful force that you could ever imagine. It is heaven and earth reunited. It is male, it is female, it is everything. And this light is pulsing down to the earth through you and into the earth. The divine feminine is being returned to the earth. It comes through you, through your head and your body and your heart and into the earth. And you're aware of the light going right through you and going right into the center of the earth. And as this light touches the center of the earth, it is like there is an explosion of energy. And you were of white light coming out from the earth and up through the earth. And the light comes out of the earth and touches everyone living upon this earth. And as the light touches everyone living on this earth, they feel a vibration. And it's a gentle, subtle vibration. And it's a loving vibration, a healing vibration. And if you could look at the earth as a globe, like you were way away from the earth, you were looking at the earth, you would see the earth now starting to pulsate a light outwards from itself. And the light pulses through it. And you wear it as a blue-white light. And it is a starry light. It is Nuit and Isis, the divine feminine energy, in the earth. We have merged heaven and earth. And where is Geb? You're aware that Geb is above us, the earth is above us, the earth god is above us. Ah, they have swapped sides. Mother Isis is in the earth and Geb is above. And so, in this way, the earth energy is being healed. The earth energy is being healed. Oh, and then they swap once more. And you're aware of uh, Gab is in the earth, Nuit is above. But you can feel a different energy in your feet and your body. Now as you feel that energy within you, feel the most beautiful blue lotus underneath your feet and all around you. 
aren't you aware of becoming like a blue lotus? See, Nephitim is with us. He is rebirthing you into light. Feel an energy at the base of your spine. Sekhmet is with you. And she is reunited, reigniting your kundalini energy at the base of your spine. And feel a pulsation there. And you're coming back to life. You have awoken before, then you have gone into sleep, and you are, you awake and you go back to sleep. But today is a stronger energy than you have had before. You feel that warmth, that vibration, that kundalini activation. And Elizabeth cannot do this for you. You must do it for yourself. Today is about you activating yourself and reuniting and receiving your own words. This is the way it is. And we would remind you all in this room of your duty to be here from long ago. You chose it almost at the beginning of Earth time and you chose it before your incarnation. And we thank you for honoring and remembering today. Now we've spent light up think of your family and friends and just place your hands in front of you and allow pulses of beautiful starry you know, wheat energy to flow to them. Be aware of starry energies entering their crown and flowing down all around them. Be aware of get working beneath their feet to connect them with the earth energies of stability and strength. While Nuit showers them with starry energies of light and infinite imp um, possibilities. And take a few minutes and all your family and friends and loved ones, the ones you care about, see them connected with Nuit, connected with Geb. And then see Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, shooting incredible blue-white light into them. as the white light flows into them like a burst. They feel the vibration and know something beautiful has happened. They can't quite explain it, but it feels beautiful. Now Isis is with each and every one of them. Kuan Yin is with each and every one of them. I get a sense of that beautiful, motherly, Guan Yin, Isis, calming energy descending upon them.
and Isis is saying, Dear ones, we thank you for connecting heaven and earth. And each day we ask you now to see uh, within the room that you're in, and we to above and get below, and see them merging together and merging their energies together within you. Then look up and see the bright star Sirius flowing beautiful blue-white light to you. And as you do, you look up and you see uh, the Nuit energy above, feel the Geb energy below, and merge the energies together. And finally look right up and imagine you have a globe. And as you see the globe of the earth, see Nuit above, Geb below, and then they merge together within the earth in an explosion of light and energy and our chemical reaction. What is alchemy that is being done tonight? It is alchemy. And as there is now a new surge of energy within the earth, it will become easier for all who work with light and healing energy to live and work within the earth and on the earth to do their work and the light will uplift many people. There will be a greater awakening upon the earth. As many awaken, become enlightened. There will be a greater flow of abundance and joy for all. Thank you.